she's going to get it. I love her, guys. We'd like to welcome you to the proceedings of the Grand Rapids Board of Education. It is Monday, June 16. Please rise and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Ross, can you please take the roll? Lake. Present. Mr. Ross, present. Dr. Randles. Present. Mr. O'Connor, uh, excused. Pastor Moody. Present. Reverend Matias. Present. Mr. Legrand. Yes. Dr. Baker. Yes. President Fall. Yes. We have a quorum with eight. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So support. Uh, I support. Support. Motion to approve the agenda? Or? Yes. I, I there were suggestions of an addition. Uh, uh, amended agenda. Sure. So then uh, I'd move that we uh, uh, approve the agenda with the addition of the uh, uh, vote on the budget. Do I have support for that? <coughs> support. All right. Uh, we should probably call the roll on that. Or, no, I don't think we have to for the agenda. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Same sign? Thank you. We have an agenda with the addition of the approval of the 2014-2015 budget under action items. Next on the agenda are our celebrations. Thank you, President Fogg. I would ask uh, first Ron Gorman to come forward. Thank you. Okay, good evening. Good evening. <clears throat> Superintendent Neal, President Fobb, distinguished members of the board. We are here this evening to celebrate yet another GRPA Skates Millennium Scholarship recipient. Uh, just a quick refresher on the scholarship. Uh, we, we, gave the, we, we had a GRPS recipient uh, last year. Applicants must have a 3.3 grade point average or above. They are assessed based on academic achievement community service, and leadership. Every single year, there are 54,000 applicants for this uh, distinguished award. And of those 54,000 applicants, only 1,000 receive scholarships every single year. Funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, it's a good through graduation scholarship, meaning that it's uh, a bachelor's degree all the way through a PhD or doctoral level work at any college or university of her choice. Mm. Tonight I am here to introduce to you a 2014 Gates recipient, daughter of uh, Sonia de la Cruz and Homero de la Cruz. I am here with Sophie de la Cruz and Carl Nelson, her building principal. Sophie is a recent graduate of Union High School she is a student who has been with the Grand Rapids Public Schools since kindergarten, uh, attending Southwest Community Campus, Coval Elementary, Westwood Middle School, and Union High School. So please uh, give a nice warm welcome to the 2014 Gates recipient from the Grand Rapids Public Schools, Ms. <laughs> Sophie De La Cruz. All right. This evening, Sophie will tell you a little bit about the application process, tell you a little bit about herself, and tell you a little bit about her future plans. Ms. Sophie De La Cruz. Good afternoon, or Good evening. Good evening. Um, well, to get the gates, I had to write eight essays. I had to have a 3.3 or above GPA, and I had to be of any minority. 
And the hardest part, of course, was the essays. Um, they were a very different subject. Um, some said, what were your, what do you, what subject do you excel, excel in? What subject is your most is difficult for you? And things like that, like what are your future goals? And yeah, um, and it, it was a lot of work, but it was, I got through it with the help of Ms. Dean, Ms. Frazier, and Ms. Everett. Ms. Everett was my recommender, and Ms. Frazier was my nominator. And I plan to attend Grand Valley State University in the fall to pursue a degree in higher education and foreign languages. Not sure what exactly I'm going to do. I want to be a college professor someday, or maybe a dean of a college. A president? Love it. Yeah, president. A president. <laughs> <laughs> they get to make more decisions. Yeah. <laughs> and I chose Grand Valley because They've always been there to help me out with anything I've needed for college, like to know more about college. In sixth grade, they offered me a scholarship. And in sixth grade, I wasn't even thinking about college. So <laughs> yeah, so they've been there for me through all my high school career. Uh, at this time, Mr. Nelson, you have a few words, please. Thank you, sir. Um, Sophie is just a tremendous young lady. She's dynamite in spirit. Uh, the smile that she gives off every day is unbelievable, and that smile continues throughout the day no matter what. Um, she, she's persevered through just about everything a high school student could. She comes out shining on the other side. I can't say anything more about this young lady that uh, she's tremendous. I have, I have two daughters, and I, I hope that they uh, become just like uh, Sophie because she is just a dynamite person. Absolutely. That's great. And there's, there's one connection, and, and Sophie talked about her already. Uh, Miss Maya Frazier, who's the counselor at Union High School, who was the counselor at Creston High School, this is her uh, fifth uh, Gates recipient in, in five years. So hats off to the great teacher and counselor. And with that, Sophie, we come back and give us an update pretty quickly? An update? Maybe in four years, yep. and then when you're, and maybe, maybe two more years after that, and then when you're, when you're Dr. De La Cruz, will you do that for us? Absolutely. Wonderful. Okay. Can you shake the hands of the board members? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Good job. Thank you. celebration we do I would ask Mickey Savage to come forward please thank you superintendent Neal madam president board members I'm here tonight to present the Nellie H Steven Nellie H Stevens travel award for 2014 to be eligible for consideration of this award you must be a teacher with Grand Rapids Public Schools that has a minimum of five years of experience with the district service with the district and we gave the teachers the opportunity to present us with a narrative as to how their travel could come, they could bring that back and enhance the teaching and learning for our students of the district. And we had three candidates submit their information to us. And I'm very pleased to introduce to you the recipient of the Nellie H. Stevens Travel Award for 2014 and present Ms. Karen Williams, one of our art teachers, a check this evening for $1,500 towards her summer travel. Awesome. Good. Nice. Right. Good job. Good job. First of all, thank you very, very much for considering me. Um, I, I came, when I first got into education, I was a graduate of Michigan State University. Yes. And I have to tell you, when I first, um, when I first got out and started teaching, I, I didn't like it. I felt okay. like I was just simply went from one side of the desk to the other. And I felt as though I had, I didn't experience anything in life. I just felt all I did was kind of make a big circle. And um, I remember specifically when I was teaching that I would, as I would go off to work, I would see a bunch of people in, in cars and they were all sales reps and they were driving Cutlass Supremes at the time. And I thought, <laughs> I want to be going somewhere. I want to be doing something. Long story short, I became a sales rep. And I did that at, for about six years. And 
and uh, called on various places all around Grand Rapids and Chicago and, and New York. And then I decided to do some traveling. And one of the places I went to was Australia, New Zealand, and Fiji. And when I was in mm -hmm. Fiji, I met people who were traveling and spent far less money than I did uh, going around the world for, say, six months at a time that I did in three weeks. I shook my hand with my girlfriend in that airplane on the way home, and I told her, a year from now, I'm going to be traveling with a backpack. So I did. I went to, uh, I went to Japan, Thailand, Nepal, India, Hong Kong, and came back via uh, Hawaii. Thailand, something there resonated with me. And uh, I had, when I was in um, Nepal, I had injured my foot, and I ended up back in Thailand again. And the headmaster of the school there was on a sabbatical for one year. The headmaster happened to be on a sabbatical in Ann Arbor, Michigan. So out of all the places when I came back to the United States and my company hired me back, um, they had given me a company car. And about three months later, I went to go visit this man who was in Ann Arbor, Michigan, just because I wanted an extension of my trip. And he helped me fill in the gaps with my pictures where I was in Thailand. He encouraged me to fill out an application for the international school because I was a teacher. And I thought, you know, I'd love to go back in time, but I didn't just want to hang around. And I thought, do I want to go back into teaching? I ended up there. I was going to stay for one year. I stayed for nine. Oh. And I taught at the Chiang Mai International School. I started out teaching literature, language, art, social studies to grades six, seven, eight, and nine. And I did that for six years. We built um, the high school. And then later, an opening came available in art. And I interviewed for that position, and that's where then I stayed. Upon coming back to Grand Rapids, Grand Rapids was looking for somebody with multicultural experience. And I was that person at that time. And uh, that was then 16 years ago. Um, I have not been back to Thailand for 10 years. My husband is Thai. My daughters are Thai. Uh, but it is a very expensive to get back there. and. When this proposition came up about the Nellie H. Stevens Award, I, you know, I kind of tossed it around and thought, well, okay, I'll see. And we had been planning on going, but then in the end, then I was uh, given this award, and it really, it, it, it made me focus this on what I've got when, when I go back through the eyes of a teacher that's been in Grand Rapids Public Schools, as opposed to how I started out as a teacher in Thailand coming back to the United States. There are things when I've tried teaching about Thailand in my classroom to the art students, I found that there's a missing gap, and that's something that's relatable. And so when I go this time, I'm going through the eyes of a teacher where I envision myself taking pictures of me with the artifacts in my hand, even with the video, having a Thai person talking about it, and then actually having that artifact in my hand and then presenting it through the video to the screen, then in my classroom having that, that same artifact right there to be able to relate that experience with them. Another thing I find is that the younger kids have a hard time. So perhaps this time taking like a Curious George or some type of a, a little figure with me and putting them inside that, that picture and create a narrative that helps explain. Um, when you travel, you, you immerse yourself in another culture. Uh, you, right now, I get, to, I get to replenish my own creativity. Sometimes you get stuck in that classroom, and the ability to replace your creativity is just, it's, it's immeasurable. So I thank you for that. So to you, I say, Dichan Kap Kun Mak, Samrap Wang Rang, Nelly H. Stevens, 2014. That means I thank you very much for the Nelly H. Stevens Award. It will give me experience for my students to bring into the classroom. And really, it's to help me very much deep down in my side to, to bring excitement back into the classroom. And I thank you. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Next on our agenda is uh, public comment for board agenda items. Mr. Ross. Uh, yeah, we uh, well, yeah, we have one for Mr. Michael Scruggs, and. Um, a budget issue and Sam Jones for a budget issue. Okay. Gentlemen, if you would 
Make your way down here. What's the other one? Just this one right here. Just I spoke to the budget issue early. I want to speak to standardized testing for the state. Have a seat, okay. sir. You have right. three, three minutes. minutes. Okay, Michael Scruggs, uh, candidate for the 29th District, Michigan Senate. Uh, there's some, been some changes uh, throughout uh, throughout this state as far as education. Uh, we, the King County Black Caucus, have went down and lobbied legislators. Seems like no one is talking about social promotion, that we pushing students through the system. In, in, in saying that, uh, our superintendent uh, of, of schools uh, been having some difficulties on standardized testing. Uh, should it be meat or smart balance or should it be common core? And is it aligned with the curriculum? And, and looking at that, we see that teachers are saying that they're looking at their tenure, that they can be creative, and they don't know if they want to support uh, smart balance or should they be supporting the, the common core. With that being said, they feel that they have to teach to the test. They feel that they cannot be creative in comprehensive thinking, decision making, logical reasoning that students need. So some of them are taking early retirement that affected the budget, that affected the deficit that you mentioned for next year. My question is, have you all heard this? And if you have, do you all have a contingency for that? We want to help, but we need to know how can we help? Should we be talking about Common Core? Personally, I feel that standardized testing is a disparity against low income students. But we need to know where you all are so we know where we need to be. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Scruggs. Mr. Sam Jones, darling. Mr. Sam Hello. Jones. Is um, this regarding a agenda item? Yeah, the budget. Great. All right. Um, I'd just like to uh, quickly start by introducing myself. My name is Sam Jones, darling. I was a student of Grand Rapids Public Schools from kindergarten all the way up until ninth grade. And then I decided to go homeschooling after ninth grade. Um, and I graduated out of Grand Rapids Community College with a GED from their adult education program, and I plan on attending Grand Rapids Community College in the fall for political science. Um, I'd just like to start by saying that uh, that the budget, um, in the previous in the hearing, I was told that the budget, uh, when considering for the budget, administrative cuts were not considered, um, <laughs> or were not highly considered. Um, it is in my opinion that the administ that administrative, high level administrative cuts should be in this budget. Some of the salaries of our administrators are too high and on the receiving end of that, as I was as a student uh, during the Blicky days and the Taylor days are the other students, uh, people like me. And so I just have to say that uh, I would ask that you take a look back you go back and you check the budget, check where you can cut, because even a thousand helps. Just that thousand. And as a, um, another thing I do is I'm also a nonprofit administrator. And so I know what working on a tight budget is like. So we have to have pull punches from everywhere. And if we ask students to take falls, if we ask teachers to take falls, High level administrators need to take falls. And I mean, Superintendent Weather O'Neill does a wonderful job. And I've told her that multiple times in the past. But it might be time to give up a little bit of the paycheck. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda items? No, ma'am. All right. Uh, next is the Secretary's report. Mr. Ross. Uh, I don't have a report at the time, just a reminder to anyone interested that the um, next board meeting on July 7th or schedule has been canceled, and the next one will be uh, July 21st. Other than that, I have no report. Thank you, Mr. Ross. Superintendent. Thank you. I have a couple uh, reports. The first that I'd like to ask Larry Johnson to just come down and share briefly about the end of the school, the closing um, of this year.
Uh, good evening, uh, Dr. Fob, uh, Superintendent Neal, um, reigning board members. Uh, with that, actually, it was a, a rather uh, uneventful closing, and um, we uh, we really take our hats off to our teachers, administrators, and just uh, all the support staff that uh, that work very collaboratively together with uh, with the police department and community members as well. Just identifying uh, the traditional hot spots in our city where we had kids lingering on for hours and hours at the end of the school uh, day. Uh, we put a plan in place of, uh, that lasted about 10 days. And uh, what we did is we modeled the plan after Harry Wong's first 10 days of school and those important things that must be done inside the classroom. We kind of modified that and put it in place for the last 10 days of school and, uh, and how we shut a school down. We believe how we shut it down, it has significant impact on how we <coughs> open it up next year. So it's very uneventful. Uh, and, and again, that just really goes to the hard work uh, to see teachers out walking the street with young people and to see administrators out of the office and, and walking the street with young people. It, it just made, made a significant <coughs> impact. Uh, Ten years ago, uh, on, a, on a, the last couple days of school, our staff was uh, still on the streets at 6 o'clock at night uh, moving students home. Uh, we were pretty much done within 30 to 45 minutes at the, the bell closing uh, each day mm -hmm. in the last uh, 10 days of school. So, uh, and, and hats off to our students. Our students right. are making some great choices right. and, uh, mm -hmm. and not doing anything crazy. Transit center, uneventful. And, and again, it was, uh, it was a great closing. And I think uh, because of the good closing, uh, we'll have an uneventful uh, summer uh, school sessions and uh, we'll have a great opening next year. And uh, thanks for all you guys' support. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Johnson? All right. Thank, Thank you very much. You. I have one more uh, report that I would like to present. And I will ask John and Ron to come forward, please. Good evening, Madam President, members of the board, Madam Superintendent. We're here um, just to provide a little update on our contract negotiations, particularly as it relates to the calendar. As we're approaching the end of the year, you and my department and many of us may be getting calls from students and parents, staff members alike, volunteers, wondering what our calendar looks like for next year. Where are we at? Why do we not have a calendar yet? And um, it's not uncommon for us to, uh, to negotiate our calendar, but this year is particularly unique because of an unfunded state-imposed mandate. Uh, I think it's important to talk a little bit about that so that there's a broader understanding of why um, we, have ha we have to sit down and we're gonna work through this because there's this, this new mandate that um, has made it challenging for us to kind of come together. And I, I think it's important to note that this stems from the state aid supplemental that was signed by Governor Snyder in April of this year. Uh, among other things, what this did is it increased the number of student days from 174 to 175. Notably, the budget that was actually just approved um, recently, that, that actually says that by 2017, that will go up to 180 days. So this is just the beginning of what would be coming down the, 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 the pipe. The other part is that it also mandates that professional development can no longer be counted toward our instructional hours. And as you know, as part of the transformation plan, this has been a real strong focus on reinvesting in our talent, retention, recruitment, and professional development, at which time we have 36 hours of professional development that's required with our teachers. And so um, we want to assure the board members and all of our stakeholders that uh, we are at the table. We have actually had uh, eight plus meetings uh, with uh, our, our friends in the GREA since April. We are working together. We're working collaboratively to, uh, to tackle this. Um, we, are, we have found common ground. You'll hear that Ron will talk a little bit about our position and where we found those, that common ground. We are really trying to find a way to equally distribute the burden of this state-imposed unfunded mandate equally between the district and the union, and we're going to continue to work on it. So, Ron, you want to talk a little bit about some of the details? So, uh, just a, a little feedback on the big bucket items as of our June 9 uh, proposal. So, the, the first big bucket item is reducing the number of teacher workdays from 181 to 178 uh, while increasing instructional minutes by 13 minutes a day. Uh, our, other <clears throat> our other big bucket item is uh, ending the school year next year in the first week of June instead of going into the second week of June. Uh, as you know, our buildings get very, very warm. Many of them are not air conditioned. 
So that second week of June, is, it's, it's very difficult to continue programming. And you'll notice that this year, some of our, we were very uh, specific about how we program summer school. And in, in most instances, we were able to have programming in air conditioned sites. So ending school year, ending the school year on that first week is very helpful. An area on which we had to sac sacrifice was the reduction of professional development from 36 hours to 30 hours. Uh, the state mandates 30. We've always done 36 in the Grand Rapids Public Schools, but this is an area where we said, okay, in, in order to, uh, in order to uh, help everyone involved, uh, we thought reducing PD from 36 to 30 was helpful. Something new uh, that we would like to try for this upcoming school year is record flex, a record flex pilot, which uh, typically when teachers are working on their records after uh, their students uh, have examinations or have morning programming, the teachers are required to stay in their buildings and work on their records at that time. Uh, we are going to pilot this year, or, or our proposal is to pilot uh, the opportunity for teachers to have flexibility in those areas. So when the students leave in the morning, the afternoon, in some instances, they can go home because we know we have folks have computer access at home and the computer is just in a building. Uh, we want to continue with our choice professional development. We believe individuals have individual needs and therefore we want to have a menu option of professional development uh, which is catered to the individual. So we want to continue to do that. Um, another, another area uh, where our proposal uh, puts a, a sacrifice on the building is reducing the evening activities that are mandatory in the contract from five to four. Uh, as of right now, all the teachers and all of the buildings have five mandatory evening activities. Uh, in most instances, those are for beginning of the year open houses. At the high school level, we, we make the graduations mandatory sometimes. Uh, when I was principal at Creston, a homecoming dance or something significant reduce our proposal is to reduce those from five to four. Uh, another area where uh, we are we feel that we are uh, giving back is the uh, reduce reducing the mandatory faculty meetings that are held on the first and third Mondays of each month, reducing the times of those meetings from one hour and 30 minutes to one hour. Uh, we also uh, the GREA uh, put a proposal to us, where they wanted uh, the 10 days uh, placed on the calendar where the, where the teachers have access during the summer. So although it was in the contract, it was never on the calendar. So we are within our proposal, that's something that we agreed to. And then lastly, the GREA wanted some informational dates, some housekeeping items placed on their calendar, and that's something uh, we've agreed to as well. So those are some of the big bucket things on which we're focusing noticed uh, there were some instances where we were reducing professional development, we're reducing time in front of teaching staffs, but we believe that we have to do our part in order to get this uh, un unfunded mandate uh, taken care of. Any questions? Yeah, have you uh, discussed this with teachers at all? Have you had any kind of consultation with them? Uh, the, when the GREA uh, presented to us last time, uh, their organization, they've been connecting with teachers. Um, many of the items that are in our proposal uh, were brought forth by the GREA. Uh, for example, uh, we've been, I know we've been getting a lot of calls coming to Human Resources about why are the neighboring school districts out and why are we still here. Um, we know that uh, the GREA is, is moving in that direction. So we're, we're trying to reach consensus where we can, knowing that there are going to be lots of sacrifices as a result of adding days to the school year. I mean, we have to add significant days that we never had to in the past. Uh, as, as a building principal, you know, those, those mandatory evening activities are how you really rally your parents around your school. Mm -hmm. You know, that was a sig significant concession that we thought we had to make in the proposal. Uh, you know, there, there are some things on which we agree. We, we agree that, you know, that 10 days before, that should be on the calendar. Uh, that, that teachers are professionals and record keeping, they have internet access at home. Many of those things can be done. So we have, we've agreed so much and it's, I think it's been a really, really good process. But we're just getting to a point where we have to make some decisions so that our parents know when school starts, our teachers know what time their school starts. 
there are transportation implications to this. So, uh, you know, I'm sure the, the union as well as the administration, we want to get a calendar as soon as possible, and we thought we'd share those big bucket items with you tonight. Thank you. No further questions, questions here. Okay. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Uh, first on our action item is uh, the approval of the 2014-2015 <coughs> budget that was presented to the board, revised today's work session and to the public at the 6 o'clock hearing. Do I have a motion for adoption of that budget? Uh, a motion to adopt it. I, I had some direction that this actually breaks down into four pieces. I don't know if we want to hand them, handle them individually or if we want to handle them uh, collectively. Um, but in fact, we've got an, an, an amendment number two to the twenty to the thirteen fourteen budget, an approval of the fourteen fifteen general operating budget, uh, approval of the special revenue budget, and approval of the debt service budget. All right. So I think that those can all be handled collectively, personally, but uh, having listed them, it's sufficient. Mm -hmm. All right, I will take that recommendation. So a motion for the items listed by Mr. Legrand. You need a motion? Support. Did you want to make a motion? Sure, I'll move, oh, to, okay. I'll move that we do those four. Support for that motion. Support. Thank you, Ms. Slade. Questions, discussion? If I could, um, yeah, just to fill in the public, and since we're since this, the cameras are rolling on this and not downstairs, um, I'd certainly like to thank uh, the superintendent and uh, everyone in the administration who went back and did some significant work uh, to bring us a budget which looks, uh, which is very very frugal, which has, um, which I think has been examined um, line by line. And there are a number of changes made to the budget as proposed, and I don't think any of them were easy. Uh, a lot of them were a matter of negotiating with out outside providers. Um, but the budget we have presented to us now, the principal budget for next year, does fall within our guidelines um, for allowing us to maintain a uh, budget reserve, uh, balance reserve. And um, for, as a point of reference, it's a, it, it is a deficit uh, that we're proposing, but it's approximately the same order of magnitude as last year's deficit. Just to frame the discussion. So um, we discussed this briefly at the hearing, but um, so it was reported in the media last week that we're gonna have 13, that we had a 13 and a half million dollar deficit. So uh, could you refer to the changes that Dr. Mr. Legrand was referring to? Explain what, mm -hmm. where we're at now. I can. Um, Without going into all of the details that we discussed uh, just a short time ago, we went through and looked at every line item in the district to make reductions where we could. We also um, received the information from the uh, from Lansing, and so we know more about um, the dollar amount that we're starting out with. We talked about this about two and a half years ago that um, everything would be up for grabs and we would need to tighten up where we could as far away from the classroom as we could. And so that was what we did. We went back and uh, made some tweaks. In addition to that, we did look at our contracts to see where we could get additional um, dollars into the district. And there will be cuts. But I would like to say that this is the beginning. We still would like to get to a 7% fund balance. So we will continue over the next five or six months to make additional cuts. Questions? Yeah, the cuts that we have, so we are, we, we are, so two problems it seems. One is that we've had to make cuts, and two is that we still have a budget deficit, and presumably, you know, we're going to be in a really bad situation a year from now when we're, it's going to be harder to, to maintain that. So, so one is that, uh, so that's, that's a long term legislative slash mm -hmm. changing things um, discussion, but in terms of the cuts, so it does seem like we were uh, all, all 10 of us up here were concerned about making sure that they were as far away from the classroom as possible and it does look like that. But could you explain just a little bit where some of the major cuts are gonna come from and, and how we're going to um, proceed? Mm -hmm. So uh, one, large, um, one large 
reduction will come in our transportation line, and that's almost a million dollars. And that's that's really working with Dean to look at um, our current contract. So that's one, and we knew that we would make adjustments there based on um, our actual use. So that was a pretty large one. The other is um, just getting additional revenue in. Um, so that's a huge piece of adding um, additional dollars there. We are looking at a reduction in our athletic budget um, in order to balance out and considering some um, areas where we have not wanted to really visit in the past, such as pay to play. And if so, what does that look like? Um, those are probably the major. Um, well, I think if I could, I think there was, you, you had almost $900,000 in individual departmental mm -hmm. uh, savings. And that was a matter of going, in, so the public mm -hmm. knows that was savings in HR, savings in right. uh, department by department mm -hmm. uh, at the administrative level mm -hmm. and, in, and in departments and not in the classroom. So I, actually a huge amount of the, of the reduction in this budget has yep. been going back and, and um, doing non-classroom mm -hmm. um, savings in departments. And what we try to do is really um, take this across the entire district and some of the areas that um, that we did make, we will be making reductions for next year um, are those that we, we um, knew that we were going to make over the past couple years. So, but it's really just throughout the entire district. Okay. Thank you. Any other further questions? Comments? Mr. Ross, can you please take the vote? Ms. Slate. Yes. Mr. Ross, yes. Dr. Randalls. Yes. Pastor Moody? Yes. Reverend Matias? Yes. Mr. Legrand? Yes. Dr. Baker? Yes. President Fogg? Yes. Uh, motion passes 8 0. Thank you. Uh, next on our action items, I'm trying to find it in our packet, but it is the nomination. See it I didn't see it. Did you? I did not see it, no. Mm -hmm. um, is it in there? Mm -hmm. I don't believe, did anyone see it? I did not see it. We have on there parent advisors for special education. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. That, yes, yeah. Like yeah. That. Mm -hmm. that was not in our packet. Was it? No. No. It was not. no. So I'll is there a timeline on this or can we table that? Yeah. Or is it in there? I don't there know. There is a timeline. Yeah. Do you see it? I thought it was I in there. Right here. So, okay. Okay. Yeah, I thought it's way at the end. Okay. I thought we put it in. There is a timeline on that. Are you sure? Mm-hmm. Here, so you didn't know the name. Oh, oh here we go. Page 68 and 69. Yep. On the packet. Oh. If necessary, we can run copies of it. Uh-huh. We can pull them up. <laughs> 68 and 69. <laughs> yep. There we go. Yeah, yeah six, we see 69. 72. <laughs> I got 72 on mine. There's, there's 70 63 pages. Where? Do I have a uh, motion to approve the nominations on page 68 in our packet? <laughs> Let me get to mine. So Support. Support for those? Support. We still have one. Uh, Maureen is still looking if we can just wait it just a minute. I don't have that page. Did you get there, Mom? There it is. I see it. I don't have page 68 on, on One member. See it? Yep. Got it. There are no questions. Mr. Ross, can you take the vote on those nominations? Uh, they're still taking a look over there. Okay. okay. Got it, guys? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Ross? Uh, Ms. Slate? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. Dr. Randalls? Yes. Uh, Pastor Moody? Yes. Reverend Matias? Yes. Mr. Legrand? Yes. Dr. Baker? Yes. And President Falk? Yes. That motion passes 8 0. Next on the agenda action item, uh, do I have a motion for approval of the purchasing agenda? So Support for that? Support. 
Any questions, concerns, deliberations? None. Mr. Ross? Ms. Slate? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. Dr. Randall? Yes. Uh, Pastor Mooney? Yes. Reverend Matias? Yes. Ms. Legrand? Yes. Dr. Baker? Yes. President Falk? Yes. Purchasing agenda passes 8 0. Do I have a motion for the approval of the second reading of policy 4060, 4100, 4320, 4440, and 4601? Motion for approval of the second reading of policy just listed. So moved. Support for that? Support. Any further comments, questions? These were discussed at the last meeting. Mm -hmm. Correct. So. Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Ross. Uh, Dr. Baker? Yes. Ms. Slade? Yes. Mr. Ross? Yes. And Dr. Randall? Yes. Pastor Moody? Yes. Reverend Matias? Yes. Mr. Legrand? Yes. And President Fall? Yes. Those motions regarding those policies passes 8 0. I just want to say another thank you to Dr. Randall's with her Very leadership good. in the That's great. Committee. Thank you. Regarding that. Uh, do I have a motion for approval of the consent agenda? So moved. Support? Support. Mr. Ross? Hold on here. Who made the motion, please? Uh, Randall. Yes. You're busy. And I support it. It's late. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Baker? Yes. Uh, Ms. Slade? Yes. Mr. Ross, yes. Dr. Randalls? Yes. Pastor Moody? Yes. Reverend Matias? Yes. Ms. Legrand? Yes. And President Fall? Yes. Consent agenda passes 8 0. Uh, public comment for non agenda items. Uh, we have two uh, one from Mr. Adrian um, Bed, Betty, I believe. I apologize if I mispronounced that. And from Mr. Paul Helder. Adrian. Good afternoon. Uh, yeah, have a seat. Uh, you have uh, three minutes. Would you like a reminder uh, when you get to the minute mark, or you would? Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Adrian Beta. I'm with an organization called NAPS. It stands for the National Association for the Prevention of Starvation, and we're a student-run nonprofit organization based in Huntsville, Alabama, and we do. Um, relief work domestically and internationally through our 13 international branches. And um, for this summer, we're doing work in Grand Rapids area with young people in the lower income communities. And um, we inquired at Grand Rapids um, Central with um, an individual by the name of Gideon Sanders about involving some of the young people in different volunteering opportunities we have this summer with the group that will be in Grand Rapids. On July the 6th, we are hosting a community health fair and March Against Violence um, at Martin Luther King Park. And we inquired about the opportunity of having young people participate in this event. As um, it's one of the core missions of our organization to inspire change in young people through service, as many of our lives have been impacted through service opportunities. And um, he suggested that we bring this um, item to your guys' consideration. And we would appreciate any form of student participation in these events that we'll be doing. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have Mr. Ross? Uh, Mr. Paul Helder. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I hadn't really actually planned on speaking tonight, but uh, uh, felt compelled to uh, just a few moments ago. Um, because of the message that uh, went out to the public regarding calendar bargaining. Um, as I was sitting back with some of my colleagues uh, who thought we were going to see a budget presentation tonight, uh, they, they uh, began kind of nudging me and, and texting me and everything else about why are we bargaining in the public all of a sudden. Um, I, I'm not sure that that's exactly what the intent was uh, just a few moments ago, and I, I guess I want to speak to that and to let our parents know that we are working on calendar. We are trying to solve uh, a variety of issues, 
caused by individuals outside of GRPS. And we are hard at work trying to come up with solutions that we feel will help our students. Um, we don't think it does very much good uh, for students to come to school when the teacher hasn't had the opportunity to get the training that they need for building programs. Uh, we're a little concerned about the idea of perhaps as many as 10 half days. Uh, that'll be showing up in the upcoming calendar, which is one of the things being discussed uh, and, and what that means to the community. Uh, we're certainly uh, concerned from, from our own perspective uh, with the idea that some people will be paid for, for the additional time for a longer school day and other people will not. Um, obviously, there's, there's some issues around whether or not that's really fair. Uh, I do want to commend the district and uh, you know, echo the points that were made a few moments ago. Uh, the district is looking at some uh, different ideas and entertaining some of the ideas we're putting forward around uh, treating uh, GREA members as professionals and allowing them to run their own records time, around uh, uh, upholding the contract and making notes of those timelines in the contract, or in the calendar rather. Uh, of doing some of those things. We are trying to do some things differently. Um, I think, though, uh, there are still some sticking points that need to be worked through. And as I advised uh, your lead negotiator, um, one of those issues has to do with uh, the idea that people will be asked to work extra hours for no pay. Um, that's, that's problematic. We're, we're still a labor union, so that's going to be a thing. Um, we have a number of hours that uh, are required in our contract in terms of work that are not required by the state or, or really anyone else. And we're looking for ways to offset some of those extra instructional hours that the state is requiring with some of those other hours that uh, perhaps don't impact children the same way. Um, so again, uh, as long as we're communicating with the public about what's going on with bargaining, uh, we thought it would be advantageous to, to kind of echo those statements and uh, put in the information that perhaps was missed. Um, as far as uh, uh, the compensation bargaining that's taking place right now, uh, I just want to say we really haven't started that yet. Um, we've had some difficulty uh, uh, getting folks to the table, kind of like we did with uh, uh, calendar bargaining. There just aren't enough people uh, with enough time uh, that all coordinates, I guess, is one of the issues. Um, but, uh, you know, we, we we're pretty confident that things are going to work out. I know that there's a lot out there uh, right now about budgetary problems and, and you know, the usual sky is falling stuff that we hear every year. Um, you know, I've been here 15 years and have been hearing that in two years we're going to have impending financial collapse uh, for every one of those 15 years. Um, I just want to let the public know you don't need to worry. You don't need to, to freak out and, and start looking for other districts, put your kid in because we're going to collapse. We're not going to collapse. The employees aren't willing to allow it, for one thing. Uh, last thing we want is the district to collapse because we're all out of jobs then, too. So, um, but that's it for now. Uh, I guess uh, uh, I'll have to communicate uh, with the district and find out if we are, in fact, going to be negotiating in the public, and if so, uh, what parameters, if any, we're going to use. Thanks. Excuse me, Mr. Hall. That's it. Uh, Superintendent's comments. No comment. No comment. No comment. Mr. Ross. Um, just thank you to the these folks from NAPS, you know, coming up here to uh, Gunru, trying to help get some things together. Just my hats off to young people really trying to be leaders. Just always appreciate that. That's encouraging. Mm. Reverend Matias. Just appreciate the hard work that, you know, staff and administration is, is uh, doing to you know, to create a budget that really looks at, at our kids and certainly the employees, so <coughs> very hard workers. Mr. LeGram? No comment. Dr. Randalls? No comment. Ms. Slade? No comment. I guess I would just like to uh, give a shout out to everybody who participated in graduations. They were, they were really beautiful and it went well and I know a lot of work and effort went into them and an another congratulations to our graduates and their families. Mm -hmm. Meeting adjourned. Hey, Dr. Fall.